Do you ever feel like you're not getting things accomplished? That no matter how much time you're spending in your craft room, you never seem to get a project done? Now in today's video, we're gonna be looking at creating tags because tags take even less time than cards do. So it can give you that really immediate boost that you've accomplished something, even if you only have, let's say, five minutes for your craft room. Hey everyone, I'm Justine, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so excited to show you how I created these beautiful tags and turned them into masterpiece cards like this one. Let's get started. All right, so in order to build up our tag collection, we gotta do some bulk stamping to get some quick and easy tags out there. I'm gonna show you some great methods to create quick and easy tags. So as you can see, I have a six by six piece of cardstock and I've laid out my stamps so that they do not exceed three inches to the top or three inches to the side. This way I can stamp in each quadrant of my cardstock. And when I'm doing layering stamping, of course, this comes in a handy because I'm able to line up once and stamp four times to create four different flowers. Of course, I could have an extra six by six piece of cardstock handy and create more flowers if I want. I just have to replace the cardstock each time. So adding in my layers this way saves a ton of time. Now, if you're using this method, it means that you either own the coordinating die set or you want a fussy cut because you're gonna need to cut out all these pieces somehow. An alternative method for masked bulk stamping or bulk stamping is using the masking technique. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my original image here, my outline onto some masking paper and I'm gonna do some fussy cutting and cut it out. When you're masking, you wanna make sure that you cut right on the line or just on the inside of the line. Then you can go ahead and stamp your flower as you would normally do it, but you'll notice that this time the leaves are missing and you'll notice I stamped a little bit darker this time to get more of a contrast. So I'm going to add my masked image onto my stamp here and then I'm gonna get started. Now this time I'm going in and I'm adding my leaves so now they're protected by the masked image. Now when you're doing this, you're gonna leave the stamp on the misty just like we did before but this time you are going to clean off the stamp and then you're going to add your second layer in the second quadrant up here. You'll notice I turned my stamp as well or my cardstock as well when I did this. So you'll pick up, stamp with the medium color this time, stamp it down, clean the stamp, rotate and add your next layer. This way, it makes it really easy to stamp the alternative three flowers that are left, or as I said, if you have another six by six sheet handy, you can do, of course, way more flowers. So all I need to do now when I go in is add my masked image on top of any of the flowers here, and then I can go ahead and start stamping my way along, and all I need to do is rotate my cardstock each time. And also, of course, you wanna add your masked image in each time as well to protect the flower you've already stamped. Okay, once I have all my bulk stamping done, you'll see I stamped in blue as well for good measure. I'm going to use the Terrific Tags die set here to create my tags. Now, the one that I created just now where I masked off the leaves, which means they're sitting perfectly behind the flower, I can go ahead and add in these tags wherever I want on the cardstock, seal them with some washi tape here and run them through my die cutting machine as is, and I come out with beautiful tags and all they need afterwards is a sentiment. So here's a look at some of the die cuts coming out and I will show them all up close in a minute. Now alternatively, I've cut out some white tags as well and I've fussy cut all the flowers and leaves from the first bulk stamping and I can arrange them in any way that I like on my cardstock here on the tags. Whether you're using just one or two, it's completely up to you. And then you can slip in the leaves behind as you see fit and create yourself some your own little bouquets or collages of flowers. In the end, I settled on this design roughly here. Now, I don't know about you, but as I said, scrapbooking to me was an amazing way to record my memories of my loved ones and then to have a really great theme. I had an amazing sampling of handmade creations. Now, these projects though took years sometimes, months of planning, hours of sitting down, and in all honesty, I started to get discouraged after the years because I felt like I wasn't getting anything accomplished, which is one of the reasons why I never gave up scrapbooking, but I switched over to card making for those times when I only had a half an hour or maybe an hour here and there to get things done. It's really hard to schedule that creative time. So card making was a perfect outlet for me because it was short and simple and sweet. At the end, I had my finished project, I felt accomplished, and it can go away from the thoughts in my brain. So then, I had this idea the other day. 
why not create something even simpler for those times when I really only have a few minutes, 5, 10, 15. I can't really make a card unless it's super clean and simple in that amount of time, but I can create a tag that is beautiful. I have a really small space to work with, probably just enough room for one stamp, then I'm done. So I'm gonna show you so many ways in this video on how to feel accomplished and to get those tags produced so that when you have a moment, you can sit down and make amazing cards. Now another tip on creating tags quick and easily is grabbing a stamp set with a huge focal point. So I'm using the Courageous You stamp from Altenew and I am heat embossing it onto a piece of white cardstock. This stamp is huge and it comes with a coordinating stencil set which saves me even more time because I don't need to go in and color it. All I need to do is stencil in the colors. So I'm going ahead and I am using my inks here. I'm using my blending brushes and I'm using the stencil to just keep my coloring contained. And I'm just going over the embossed image that I've already created. Of course, you can, don't have to do the embossing. You can simply stamp it. It's completely up to you. And what's great about this is it's so designed so well that it masks off the alternative leaf there, as you can see. So that's super cool. And when it's all said and done, you're going to have a focal point image that looks like this. So you can see all the beautiful colors in this stencil set and stamp set. And what's really cool, again, you don't have to do any fussy coloring or anything like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fussy cut this. Now you don't need the die cut. You don't even need to cut this really all that nicely, to be honest with you. I'm going super roughly around the edges. And this stamp here isn't too detailed that it takes a lot of work. So when you're finished, you can lay out a whole bunch of white tags and you can start gluing on areas of the stamp set. Now don't forget as you're doing this, of course, you can go ahead and trim whatever you like off the edges. You can let the flower hang over the edge. It's completely up to you how you wanna do it. But all I did was I kept cutting the images directly against the tag here by cutting from behind. And then whatever was left over of my stamp, I kept piecing it together over on top of the tag. So I ended up getting a ton of tags out of this little technique here by doing that one focal point. And as I said, if you can save yourself some time with coloring by investing in that coordinating stencil, then you're going to be really good to go in creating tags in minutes. Technique number four is simple stamping. So don't forget the power of simple, clean and simple stamping. So I'm going ahead with some Altenew Fragile Foliage Stamp and I'm going ahead and I'm adding some of this beautiful purple color as my stamp. And you can go ahead and stamp multiple colors onto one tag. It's completely up to you how you wanna do it. You can just keep bulk stamping them as you wish. You can switch things up, of course, by adding multiple colors onto one stamp or adding an additional stamp layer with an additional color. Again, it's completely up to you how you want to do this, but they do create some pretty beautiful cards. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna show you on how to create easy tags, and then we're gonna go into creating the cards is using border dies. So I'm creating two of these. I'm cutting one out of white cardstock and one out of black cardstock. And I'm going in with this gorgeous in and out floral border set from Altenew, and I'm running it through my die cutting machine. You may want to use a metal shim with this one because it is quite intricate. So when it's all cut through my die cutting machine, I'm grabbing my tag dies and I'm lining them up so that I have enough of the solid area of my cardstock still so that I can easily glue. And I'm lining up as many dies as I can and I'm gonna run this through my die cutting machine once again with the tags this time. Additionally, I've cut out some black and white tags on their own that are solid. And then I can go ahead and I can glue these together by adding the white on top of the black and the black on top of the white for some really gorgeous finished cards. Okay, so I finished up all of my tags. You'll notice these balloon ones are here. This is layering stamping with the coordinating stencil. It uses the same techniques as I used in my other card, but I thought the video was getting a bit too long, so I didn't include the footage. But if you're interested in more information, please check out my blog. And so I added all of these tags here to show you just how many beautiful tags we created. And in real life, I think this took me about a half an hour to create all of these different bunches here. But now I can put them off to the side and then I can create cards out of them later or you can go straight into the card technique, of course. The next step to creating quick and easy cards with your tags is to add some sentiments to them. So you can do that in a variety of methods. I've gone ahead and cut out a bunch of these really big label love stamp set stamps. 
And I just fussy cut them by hand, but you can cut them with a paper trimmer, which is also really nice. And you can add them for a really great effect. It really makes those colors pop by adding a black stamp with white text. So whether you do that using a stamp or heat embossing, whatever works for you. Another way to add quick sentiments is by laying them all out on top of your tags, holding them in place with your Misty with magnets, and then stamping them all at the same time. This saves you from opening and closing the door multiple times and having to stamp multiple times. Makes it a lot easier when it's all said and done. It might not save you a lot of time, but I figure every few seconds counts in the craft room. So my question of the day today, if you'd like to leave me a comment below in the video description, I read all the comments and I love hearing from you. Did you start off also as a scrapbooker and move into card making? Did you come in from another niche maybe? Or did you just start card making? How did you come across card making? Let me know in the comments below how your journey began. So now comes to the time where we can turn these tags into cards. So going with the first technique, you can go ahead and add a cover plate die and colored cardstock. So I folded my yellow card base here, and of course the tag looks great even on just the yellow base just by itself. But to add a little bit more intricacy, just simply add a cover plate die like this one to your cardstock and then add the die on top. You can of course decorate these with sequins or however you like when it's all said and done, but this looks great. I love this background with this tag, it looks stunning. You can add some embellishments with some silver jewels to make it look absolutely perfect. So the second technique you're going to use is patterned paper and layered tags. So adding a piece of patterned paper as your background works really well also. And what's great is Altenew has these paper packs where they coordinate with the inks and there's stripes in all the different colors that they have, or most of them anyway. And so that's really nice to get coordinating cardstock as well as coordinating your tags with them. The next technique that you can use is vellum. I overcolored cardstock, so I'm using a light purple piece of cardstock and adding a piece of vellum to make it really subtle, and it'll make my tag stand out really well also. And the cardstock is pretty close to the ink color that I used also, which makes it coordinate in so many ways. Between the simple vellum and the simple stamping, this card turned out fabulous. So the next thing that I'm going to be using is patterned paper with a large white border. So I've cut down my patterned paper here to be quite a bit smaller than my card front and my card base rather. And this is a really great color because you have the neutral color of the grays mixed in with the whites in the cardstock. And again, all you need to do is pop your tag on top and you're all finished. Again, you can top them off with jewels if you like, some sequins, anything you like, or just leave it as is. It looks great also. My next suggestion is a cover plate die on a white and white background. So sometimes when I want to create a really white on white card or a really clean and simple card, it often looks like it gets washed out. So if I were to place this white tag on top of my white card base, I don't think it would look all that great. It would probably look fine, but adding a little bit of detail into it will make it turn out beautiful. All right, so there's a final look at that card there. And then we're gonna move into our next technique and our final one, which is the background stamp and layered tags. So in this one here, I'm not particularly using a back, background stamp per se. I'm using this large focal point flower we used in the beginning, the one that we had stenciled in. So I'm stamping this on my background. I thought about putting some vellum down before adding my tags, which is also really pretty, but I decided against it, tied up my tags with a little bit of ribbon and then attached them to my card so that the right one was still movable so it adds a little interaction with it. So here's a final look at my final card. Now, if you still haven't gotten enough, don't forget that today's video is also a part of a blog hop, so you can click on the video in the description below that is the next person in the hop for a chance to win some great prizes from Altenew. If you're interested in checking out another video, I can't recommend enough my layering stamp hacks video. If you're fascinated about layering stamps, then I definitely recommend this one to get the most out of your layering stamps and to save a lot of time as well. So thank you so much for watching today's video. I appreciate it and I will see you soon for another one.